cool. Okay. So let me start by asking, um, did you have any questions from last week that were still lingering? Um, no, not at all. I think I did pretty good on the assignment. I wasn't sure if you got it just yet. I, I haven't I haven't started to, to grade this week. Um, week one this week is always a little bit odd because um, Monday I'm finishing up the week four grading from uh, from the last semester because grades are due at four o'clock and I'm always chasing down um, stragglers okay. uh, as well as the fact that uh, I've got big big classes and it's it's always hard. Um, to get everything done in the, the immediate week after. So, um, and then it makes it tough this week because I lose, uh, I lose Monday. And uh, today with the, the go-to sessions, um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit behind. You know, I should be much more productive. Uh, I should have been grading, uh, but I was playing with uh, what I wanted to cover instead. So... <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, it's always interesting. So week one, and, and if you watch the, the Zoom, you know, if you didn't watch the Zoom, week one might be a really easy week um, because, you know, what we're saying is develop some personas and I could probably sit down with a piece of paper and, and come up with a couple personas, uh, but they wouldn't mean anything because there was no research behind them. And the, the fact of the matter is that, that you got to do due diligence and research in order to, to create the personas that, that you asked for in week one. Now, let me do this. I am going to switch. Uh, Classes in FSO. Okay. What I had did was when I turned in my assignment, I had also um, posted uh, in the feedback section, I put a YouTube link just in case the, the slideshow um, presentation doesn't load because I, okay. I did my voice narration on the uh, slideshow and I um, put it, I used it, I converted it to a movie file, a QuickTime file. Okay, cool. Very, very smart. Thank you. Okay, so let's do this. And now I'm going to share my screen. And I just got to figure out which screen. There it is. Which one window? All right, so you should be seeing your, uh, your FSO platform for... Uh, I am K five 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 two two, right? Yes. Okay, okay, good. So week one was the customer, the influencer, and the fan. Week two, we go into identification. Um I'm gonna talk a little bit about addressing negative comments and all today. Okay. Um because I, I this really gets into more social media marketing than, than new media slash influencer marketing. They're related. In okay. other words, you've got to be a good social media person to really be able to do new media marketing. Um, it's, it's like foundational. And, and as a master's student, we don't teach you social media. Um, so I, there's a couple things that I want to talk about and, just know that uh, I'll, I'll give you the, the years ago, and I mean a lot of years ago, I, I went to a, a special training uh, program that was uh, run by one of my favorite companies and authors, uh, William Byham, PhD, who wrote the book um, uh, Zapped. And he also wrote an, another book called Heroes. They're both allegory books, and they, they read very easy. And he has a company that, that's called DDI, Design Development International. And they, they provide all sorts of training courses for, for leaders. And 
the um, the program that I went through, I, I was called um, Service Excellence, and the the program was a two week program. I could tell you the the whole gist of it in ten minutes, <laughs> but there was there was for some people the two weeks were necessary because it was a matter of changing mindset, particularly back at that point in time. And the, the other issue is that uh, not only did I become a, a certified trainer, but I became a, a certified as a trainer of, of, of future trainers in that particular material with, with DDI. So one week was, was becoming certified in the material. The next week was becoming certified to teach the material. Okay. So in a nutshell, addressing negative comments is, is you have to be open, particularly in social media. And what, uh, what we learned in that, that uh, service excellence program was a little acronym called, uh, that spells HEAT, H-E-A-T. And what it was saying is you have to listen to the person that's delivering the criticism. So you have to hear, you have to then put yourself in their, in their place. How did they, you know, how, how are they feeling? How would I feel if I were, if I were them? And that's the H E empathy. You have to have empathy for, for the person. The next thing is a, and that's apologize. Not you personally, but, but on behalf of the brand, on behalf of the company, on the fact that, you know, and not even that you did anything wrong, but that this horrible situation developed. And we want to move beyond it. And then the T is take some sort of positive action on behalf of the, the audience member. Okay. So, and we call it taking the heat. Hmm. That's There's a, a lot of different things you can do that are positive. That's that taking the heat when you're, you're dealing with negative feedback is, is probably the, the best course of action. But for, for you know, the few, uh, few good course of action that there are, there are bazillions of bad things you can do. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally believe that. So take a look at this material, do a good discussion. Try and think of some examples from your, from your real experiences. Okay. I yeah, definitely I have had um, some experiences with negative comments on YouTube. I mean, everybody, everybody gets negative comments, but like one of the, um, it was like a couple of months ago, uh, one of my videos on um, my YouTube channel, uh, it was about, a person that just popped up out of nowhere uh, and um, a lot of people is believing that she's a plant or she manipulated the YouTube algorithm, which is clearly, that's definitely one of the things. But, you know, people who like that type of person, whoever she is, they were spewing negative comments and then you had some bots, but that's nothing. Well, and you know, that's, that's something else that, that you need to, to look out for is are you dealing with artificial intelligence or are you dealing with, with real people? Right. Um, I'll, I'll give you just FYI. If you know, some of the robo calls are very, very slick these days. Mm -hmm. And um, you may think you're talking to a real person, but it's, it's artificial intelligence. Yeah. The, easy, the easiest way to, to, to figure out if you're talking to a real person Ask them what the square root of four is. Ah, uh, okay. I'll the, try. Bot, the, the, the bots do not do math. Wow. Or, 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 or you know, complex math. And, and um, the square root is a, a complex uh, equation. So they, and it's, it's easy. You know, the square root of four is two. But uh, artificial intelligence, it just blows up. It'll hang up on you. Woo! Oh, wow. That's... That sounds like a real good idea when, um, you know, when the, the scammers, they call you and they say they're from a certain place. Uh, I should try. I'm going to try that. It, uh, it definitely works. Okay. In my courses, 
So you're, are you in the, the degree program or are you in the certificate? Degree. Good. The, the good news or the bad news is you're going to have me twice. <laughs> Oh no, that's perfectly fine. You're, so far, I've had I've had no um, no negative uh, situations with you. You're 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 just like every other teacher I had, except for one. So, well, see, I'm I'm a bit different than than a lot of your teachers, and I'll, I'll tell you how I'm different. Um, number one, up until well, actually, even right now, I'm I'm just like you. I'm still a student. Oh, uh, so I decided uh, a little while ago that uh, I was going to go back and, and get my uh, get a film degree from Full Sail. So um, I'm a, I'm a student just like you. Uh, but I've been my, my kids will tell you I've been a student for my adult children will tell you that I've been a student for most for almost their entire life. Um, wow. So I, I get what you go through, number one. Um, I, I get that you're an adult learner and that, that life a lot of times has a different plan for you than what you have, have planned. Um, so I, I get all that. Number two, I, I, I'm a, a stakeholder. I'm not just an employee of Full Sail. Uh, I'm a stakeholder in Full Sail, not because I work there, but because, and not because I'm a student there, although all those are true, but two of my five children have graduated from full sale. One of, one of, one of my children has, has uh, an entertainment business bachelor's degree. And then my, my daughter um, who uh, went to, has her undergrad degree from the University of Central Florida. Uh, she, uh, she got her master's at, at full sale and she got her master's in digital marketing. Okay. That's great. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. You're so, welcome. and, and now I have another daughter <laughs> <laughs> um, who's going through the program too. So I, I get to see what a lot of professors don't see. Okay. And, and so that, that, um, that little, uh, uh, formula I just shared with you, taking the heat and, and the E part, empathizing. Um, I, I think I have a, a, a very, very good perspective. Um, and I've walked a mile in, in your shoes. So um, make sure if you haven't listened to a couple of the videos that I, I gave you in the, in the early part, um, particularly what I think a master's student is, and, and number two, what my philosophy is, what my teaching philosophy is. Uh, I think those are two very important videos to listen to, okay? No problem. I'll take another look at it probably sometime later on in the afternoon. That, that's fine. Um, so though that, that's, um, that's the, 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 uh, the, the, the discussion. Oh, what I was gonna say is, from a discussion standpoint, okay. what my expectations are, let me do this. I'm going to give me a sec. Okay. And I may have sent this out last week. I may not have. I can't keep. Okay, so now I just got to pick a new, there you go. All right, you're looking at the R4. Oh, I saw that. When, um, you, that was on the uh, last week's um, archives as well. Okay, good. So this is actually based on a curriculum model that's called the R2-D2 model. I changed it around a little bit and um, just made it the R4. The, the idea being that when, when you're giving a, 
Now, let me tell you why discussions are, are important uh, in distance learning, because they, they allow you to learn at your pace and allow you to learn at the depth that you want to learn at. And, you know, in a typical classroom, when a, when a professor or an instructor asks a question, you're, you're required to kind of respond in the moment, right? right. Raise your hand and, and answer. And, and you really don't get a chance to say, I wonder what he really meant. <laughs> right. Um, I, wonder, I wonder if, well, I kind of have this idea. Let me explore it a little bit and see if it, it, it will, you know, I can make it answer the question that, that, that he asked. Um, and that's the beauty of, of uh, distance learning. And these are called asynchronous discussions so that, that you get to, to hear or see the prompt and then you get to think on it, reflect on it. What, and, and, and ultimately what you're doing when you're reflecting is you're having some sort of visceral reaction. Do I agree with this or do I disagree with it? Right? You're going you're, you're gonna to look at something and say, yeah, this makes sense. No, this doesn't make sense. Whichever way is fine. By the way, discussions in my classrooms are what I call safe harbors. There's really no right or wrong answer. Not, not from a, 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 um, a grade perspective. I, I, you know, if you blow an answer, I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you because answer you're, it. You're, you're, yeah, and you're going to learn from, from the fact that, that you went the ro totally wrong direction. Right. Okay. Um, and, and you may have learned some interesting things by going the wrong direction, too. I mean, well, I'm, I'm okay with that. It's, it's not participating that I'm not okay with um, or not participating at the right depth. So you, you need to reflect on it. Then you need to do research. And this is what makes a graduate program different than an, an undergraduate program. The, the research that you're doing is you're, if you agree, you want to find supporting evidence to support your agreement. Okay. If you disagree, you want to find supporting evidence to support your, your disagreement. And then you present that in writing back. So, and you know, the, the neat thing about writing is that, that, and why writing is so important in learning is that when we write, we're forcing our brain to create logical arguments. Okay. And to, to sequence in things in, in a way that, that, that somebody else will have to be able to make sense out of. Back when I was teaching just strictly undergrad, I had a, a, um, a student, he was an older student, um, not real old, but, but just, just older. He was retired from the Marine Corps. And he had traumatic brain injuries. Oh. Cassie, I can tell you that I would cry when I would read what he was writing. Oh, I, I can only imagine. You know, when I talked to him, he made a lot of sense. But he couldn't organize his thoughts in, in order to, to communicate effectively. And, and sometimes, well, the only way that I could get you know, when we were talking, I would have to structure the, the conversation in order to, to test what he, he knew and what he didn't know. Okay. Um, but he, he, couldn't, he couldn't communicate that on his own orally, or he couldn't communicate it on his own, certainly in, in written format. But writing is that act of, of thinking and, and turning our thoughts into to, um, communication that other people can understand logically mm -hmm. follow and, and, and make sense of. So your, your initial post is always going to be very robust. I don't necessarily put a word count on it, but it, it needs to be robust. Okay. Then you go back and, and you start to look at what your classmates wrote. You know, I'll tell you, this is where I used to have a lot of fun too. Um, when I was, when I was a graduate student, because I would, I would particularly like to pick on the ones that I didn't agree with. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I would do is the first thing I would do, I look at their reference that they put in and go look at that and see if I drew the same, you know, if I could draw the same conclusion 
from what they read. Okay. Most times I couldn't. I, I, I'd draw something else. But then I'd go and get another reference that supported my point, too. So I, if I was using one of theirs, I would, I would use theirs plus one of mine for a total of two and, and then write my response. Um, so in this class, you need to do one, one post based on my prompt, and then you need to respond to two of your classmates. Or if I happen to jump in and, and respond to somebody, then I'm fair game, too. Okay? Okay. Um, so that's what I look, look at. Like I tell people that, that academic posting, it's not Facebook posting. I don't care what you think. I want to know what you're, you're, you are informed on by research. Okay. So informed thought versus just a random thought. It makes sense. Okay. All right. So let me get rid of that. Go back to and let's go to identifying your, your company influencers. Now, again, this sounds this could be taken as, as very easy, but it's 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 not. Um, you want to take your template now, whether you, you're, you're doing a brand ambassador program or an influencer program, which, which you decided at the end of your, your first assignment, you want to want to take that either the fan template or the influencer template. And you want to go out and start to look at, at the different segments of your market and who in those segments on, um, on uh, uh, social media looks like your, your persona, okay? Okay. And so let me, let me talk about three things. We have, we have three different media channels, right? Right. We have earned media, we have owned media, and we also have, we, we, we own, earn, and paid. Those are the three types of media. Okay. We also have different types of, of marketing channels mm -hmm. or strategies. Social media is a strategy. Okay. Email is a strategy. Okay. Content, content marketing. Actually, that I'll stay away from that. So, in in essence, we and and in social media, we actually can break it down. We have Facebook. We have um, Twitter. Well, I'm not a big fan of of Twitter either, from just using it or or paid advertising in it. Um, so either, either way you look at the Twitter channel in terms of whether it's paid media or earned media, it's not my favorite. Uh, but you have, so you have Facebook and then uh, LinkedIn is also good, particularly if you have a B2B business to business business model. Okay. Um, so that's the social media channel and then, or, or social media um, strategy channel. And then you have, um, and then you have paid advertising. So uh, like Google AdWords or Google Display or, or the Bing Display Network, those type of things. Um, or Facebook advertising. So where we, we, we pay for it, but those are the, the particular strategies. So you wanna, you know, as, if, as you develop your persona, you probably said my person Joe Influencer. Joe Influencer is somebody that influences on Facebook. Okay. And I, I know I have, I have audience that's on Facebook. So I'm going to take my, my persona and I'm going to go look for somebody that's a, an influencer and, and that, that where their strength is, is Facebook. Well, you may, 
you may know that you also have an audience that, that does a lot on Instagram, right? Yes. So then you might want to find a, a, an influencer that is a Instagram influencer. Okay. okay. So you want to get two to four. Three is the sweet spot. Um, people that meet the template that you created that, that, that fit the persona that you develop. Because again, your persona is just a, it's a, it's a, uh, a generalization of what you believe that audience member is. Okay. Okay. Now, if you're doing brand ambassadors, the same thing, except the persona that you're going to use is the fan persona. All right. Now, the one thing I want everybody to do is to make sure that, that in your, in your deck, you explain how you're the person that you've chosen. And we want you to pick real people from the internet. Okay. So I'm officially allowing you to become a internet stalker. <laughs> um, but you want to pick real people and, and you want to uh, then explain how that person fits your persona that you develop. And what segment of your audience are they, they going to, they going to take care of. Okay. Now the difference between influencer campaigns and brand ambassador campaigns, a, a influencer campaign is usually short term and it's usually focused around a very specific objective. Brand ambassador campaigns are usually much more enduring. They're like evergreen. They go on forever. Okay. Now, People may change, right? Mm -hmm. But the program is going to go on forever. With, right. with influencer, if I have an influencer strategy, so the, the bottom line is in a, in a real company, you would probably have, always have some sort of ambassador program, ideally. And then from time to time, depending on what your, your, your promotional needs are, you would probably have an, an influencer campaign running certain times during the, the year. Okay. Got to loosen the throat up again. Oh, by all means, go ahead. So you're, that's what you, that's, you want to go shopping. Now I've had students in the past and this blows me away all the time. You know, I had, I had one, one student who picked his influencers Katy Perry, Beyonce, <laughs> and and um, Oprah. Uh, celebrities, they they are kind of influencers, but that's not that's definitely not enough. It, it You're be... absolutely right. You know um, what? There are there are people that were celebrities before Twitter, before social media. They right. just moved their, 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 their celebrity -ness. Don't let the grammar police catch me. Oh. Um, <laughs> they, they, they moved themselves from the, the real world into the digital world. And, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they were a celebrity before and they were a celebrity after. Right. They're, they they really fall into the realm of what you would call a paid professional spokesperson. Okay. Because for me to get them to do something, I'm probably going to have to pay them big time. Right. And if I pay them, if I pay them big time to say what I want, want them to say, then we're no longer dealing with earned media. We're, we're dealing with, paid media or advertising. It's just another form of advertising. Okay. So you may say, well, professor, what about like when Kim Kardashian starts wearing a, a uh, particular dress or a particular pair of shoes and they start selling like crazy. Once upon a time, she might've done that as a, as a favor or, or for some something. But you can bet she's that gonna want today, that money. Somebody paid her to randomly go start wearing those shoes. Right. Okay. 
what what you're interested in in terms of influencers are is somebody that their brand kind of runs parallel to your brand and and they may have blogs they they may have a big facebook following they may have a a, a, a you know a big instagram following uh, but and and they may do it they may be doing it for some sort of compensation but they're not celebrities they're 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 influencers right now so when we talk about influencer marketing there may have to be some sort of payment okay but chances are it 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 shouldn't be the starting point shouldn't be cash okay maybe it's a trade well i'll write about your brand if you write about my brand that seems fair okay or or something like that it doesn't have to be now you know again you may get to a point where there you pay a little bit for something, mm -hmm. but it's a lot less than what um, a paid professional spokesperson would charge you. Okay. Okay. So this is kind of gray and fuzzy. It's a matter of degrees. Um, but there, there, there is a, you know, there's a, there's a difference. It's, I, I always go back to, and, and you're probably too young to, to remember this, but there was a, a Supreme Court justice ruling on um, on a pornography case. And, and the quote was, I can't tell you what pornography is, but I sure know what it is when I see it. And, and you know, I, I think about that in life so many times. The, the differences are kind of hard to describe, but when you see it, you know it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and that's what you're doing with, with, with this you can push the line on, on some form of compensation. Like it doesn't have to be a, you know, an in-kind, but you, you don't want, you don't want the, you don't want to be able to say to the person, here's the script I've written you. And this is what I want you to say. And here's the time I want you to say it. And here's where I want you to say it. There's no doubt that's paid advertising. Okay. Okay. Now, brand ambassadors, I said, they, they, that's an ongoing evergreen type program. And there's a, uh, I'm not going to play it, but there's a, a, a video. And I think I give you the link. It's, it's one of um, Matt Collier's uh, examples. They were opening up a, a in and out uh, fast food restaurant somewhere in the midwest might have been texas i think it had to be texas with the accent she had um and this this lady girl uh was was sitting outside at, at an out, outside eating station and the reporter comes up and says are you excited that that you know in and out is, is opening in our town and, and and what do you think and she just goes on a huge rant. Oh boy. And starts crying. She she had moved from California and, and thought she was never ever gonna have in and out burgers again. <laughs> and and she was just so thrilled, so happy. Thank thank the Lord above for for bringing in and out burgers to Lubbockville, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's a fan right right and and they may be horrible social media influencers but god they have a passion about the the brand and those are the type of people that that you would want to recruit you can teach them the skills that they need to be good social media brand ambassadors but you want people that have a passion. Right. I, did I mention that I, um, I used to teach the, the, your, your first course in this program, Mastery. Um, I taught the, I taught the uh, campus version. Uh, okay. And I um, it was either the first time I taught it or the second time. I had this great student. And he was a, a brand ambassador for AMC movie theaters. Oh, wow. It's, 
that's a coincidence mentioning AMC because they are doing very bad right now. Yes, yes, they've got major problems. Um, but he, I said, so tell me what does it mean to be a brand ambassador? He says, well, I, you know, I just talk about AMC, but he says every month we have a, a, a phone call with the, uh, the leadership team and, and our, our sponsor and we, we get projects to do and we have, and I said, well, that, that's great. I said, what, what do you get out of this besides, you know, doing these pro little projects and, and things like that? And he goes, twice a year, instead of having a telecon, they fly everybody into Hollywood and we have a big face-to-face -face meeting over three days. So I actually get to sit and talk to the, the chief executive officer of, of AMC movie theaters. Oh, okay. I'm like, that's pretty cool. I said, is, is that all? And he goes, no, if, if we've made 90% of all the meetings, then, then we get, and it's a lump sum cash payment. I think it was around $12,000. Wow. So, but, Two caveats. You have to attend 90% of the meetings and your, your term um, as an ambassador is limited. You can only be an ambassador for two years and you can only be an ambassador if you're a, a college student. Oh. So AMC and their, so their target demographic is millennials. Right? We right. know that if they're more college students. And they're looking for two-way engagement. They're using those college students to get information back as well as to share information in the, in the greater audience. Okay. So the, uh, what you'll learn next week is where we'll get into pitching uh, either influencers or, or brand ambassadors and, and bringing them on board. Okay. How do we bring them on board this week? It's the, the assignment is pretty simple, but it's a little bit trickier than it looks. Cause you really got to do the research to find the right people and make okay. sure that, cause the other thing in your, your overall presentation, you want to make sure that you're explaining how you're, you're covering um, all the segments that are that are part of your brand. Okay. Okay. All right. A few more things, and then I'll let you go if you don't mind. Oh no, not at all. I actually have a question. Um, with okay. um, with with that, doing the research, um, do we have to? Are, are we required to contact um, the influencers of our of our choice afterwards? No, no, you're, you're just, you're just taking a look at them and you want to, you want to justify why you picked them. So you, not only doing the research to figure out which, which ones, but then when you find them, making sure that, that they, they truly meet your, your requirements okay. and then justify that on your presentation. Okay. And is YouTube considered um, a social media um, influencer as well? Because I mean, I do my own YouTube videos. I mean, I'm not like, the superstar. I only have eight subscribers right now, but I just wanted to see if YouTube was also accepted for influencers as well. The, yes, it is because so, uh, YouTube is considered social media. Okay, great, great. All right, let me uh, swing this around one more time. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about uh, new media marketing. And first thing I want to do is talk about the four pillars of social media. Okay. So with social media, what, what, and, and why these are pillars is because these really kind of define what social media is all about. So it's about communicating. It's about sharing information. So there's, there's gotta be conversations taking place. 
and not only that, it's about collaboration. So it's, it's layers of, of, of conversation that are taking place and, and looking for people to, to build upon what other people have said. Okay. I would say that, that most social media conversations fall into one of these two buckets, either education or entertainment. So I'm either trying to educate somebody or I'm trying to make them laugh or smile or, um, you know, just make them have a good time. Okay. Uh, so that's entertainment. So social media is really involved with, with these four aspects. Make sense? Yes, it definitely does. So something else that's interesting, marketers, we love to control and manipulate. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. I, I, I actually have fallen victim to being uh, manipulated w with a marketing tactic a while back. Do, do you know what two words have sold more product than, than any two words in the history of, of the human race? Um, if I would take a guess, I would probably say free and guaranteed. Not bad guesses, but I'm going to be even more direct. The, back in 1994, mm -hmm. AT&T ran an ad, and the ad basically said, click here. <laughs> clickbait and those two words click here have have been on more advertisement and have sold more product than than any two words in the history of humans oh wow anyway so but but social media is a little bit different it's not about manipulation in fact it's it's the antithesis because you know, to be successful, you have to enable conversations and, and you can't control stuff. On the, right. uh, on the discussion, there's a, a video that I give you to, to look at and it's rather hilarious, I gotta tell you. Um, and it's, it's about, I would say, a stupid marketer trying to control a situation on social media. <laughs> mm. The thing to realize is that influence is the key. To be able to guide just a little bit, that's the key. Okay? Okay. So when we talk about social media and particularly around our brand, what we're looking to do is to build community. Okay. And when we, when we, we build a community, and the reason this is important is because those people in the community will become active co-producers of content and will take an active role in doing that. Okay. okay? Okay. They will comment on content that the community has created. They will refer content to friends or colleagues. They will simply view the content or they will ignore it, but you got, everything in between to, to think about that they could be doing as well. So um, communities, it's important to build communities because um, you get all of these good things that I just talked about, um, in particular becoming active uh, co-producers of content. Okay. All right. So there's a couple of different types of communities just to be aware of. You have a metropolis community, which is a community that, that's kind of like an aggregate of all sorts of, of smaller communities, and that's Facebook. Okay. You can have an affinity community, which is a, a community that's, that's operationalized around a, a particular brand. So for example, if you, you know, if you, if you, done any market studying in the past, um, you, you would realize that Apple 
Apple has a huge affinity community built around its, its product line. And there are people out there that will fall on a sword to protect Apple. Oh, not me. I, I, I'm going to say, honestly, I do like the Apple products. I just don't like their, um, what is it? Their, uh, how they, how they, how did I say it before? I love their products. I just, they, they just have a, a crappy business, a business plan, like how they charge people and stuff like that. But their products are great. You know? Yeah, actually the, the, the customer service side of Apple sucks. Uh, um, I'll just be blunt about it. It's, it's an area. And the reason it sucks, this is actually a good thing is because they're so successful on the, the front side. Okay. Um, it would be nice if they were better on the backside, but what they've done is they've basically created automated solutions. And one thing you will learn about automation is it's great when it works and it's terrible when it fails. Oh yeah. I definitely can agree with that. Um, intercompany just that it's employee base. A vertical community is when you have um, uh, people involved in a community from uh, a, a specific industry or a specific lifestyle. Okay. Uh, that would be a, a vertical community compared to a horizontal community. They're horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> horizontal is, is when it's based on function. Okay. So, um, you know, a, a, a community that's based around desktop publishing would be vertical. A, um, a horizontal community would be uh, one based around COVID-19 experience. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Let's go to the next one. See, I'm still working on this. I thought I took that out. That's horrible. Huh. No, it's, it's, it's just fine. And I can't do anything because it's not really on my computer. I'm, I'm broadcasting it from my, my iPad. Oh, okay. Um, so what, what this is supposed to be about is influencers can sway individuals and groups, large and small, mobil, mobilizing them to adopt and evangelize your brand, brand product or, or service. Okay. We also talk about diffusion theory, and, and this is a little bit more elaborate, but, but similar to what I talked about the, the COVID-19. A third are going to go out right away. Another third are, are going to wait and see if the first third dies. <laughs> I'm very morbid. Sorry. <laughs> and then the last third, and they're the ones with the real money. They're usually older. They, they're, 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 they're not going to put anything at risk. Sonny, I'm not going to go out until there's a vaccine. Oh, that's the ones I, in my opinion, that's the ones that I think we should be worried about the most because if, if you haven't tested it and you don't know if it works and then we have a whole big thing about people passing away because of a vaccine, that's, oh boy, that, that's yeah. a lot in itself. Well, that, that last third, there, I mean, it may also be therapeutics. I think if there were viable therapeutics, they, they would come out of their, their shell as well. But just so you know, that, that is a, a my, my one-third, one-third, one-third is very similar to, to this particular doc, document with, with early adopters and innovators being the front part. Um, then we go right to the, uh, the early people okay and then we won't see the later people until quite a bit quite a bit later okay all right i'm going to show you one more deck okay oh i didn't put it in here but another important component of social media strategy is what's known as social proof have you ever heard that term before no okay so social proof means that, that, all right, have you ever heard the term ZMOT, Z-M-O-T? I have not. It's a Google term. It's an acronym. It means zero moment of truth. Okay. Okay. 
Google says that that once you once you hit the ZMOT, which they define as the moment in time where you realize that you want more information on subject and you go and you start to, to research it. You start to Google it. Okay. Okay. So the I lost my train of thought. I jumped ahead to my fictitious next slide, which is related to what I'm talking about now, but I can't make the connection. <laughs> It'll come to you. It'll come in a moment. So show that for a moment around Zmot, and let's go to, oh, social proof. I'm sorry. So social proof, I think I need another cup of coffee. <laughs> so social proof is where I'm going to search, I hit my ZMOT moment, I'm going to search, and I start to see other people that have bought the product and they're saying, it's okay, it's a good product. That may be, that may be on Facebook, or perhaps I'm going to uh, some other type of, of discussion board mm -hmm. where people talk about and provide feedback back on, on products. So social proof is important because it, it tells me, and I'm not the company in this instance, I'm just good old John, uh, that, that, that John has used this product and likes it and, and says it's good. What John actually is doing is three things. He's either one of three things or maybe all three things. He's reviewing it. He's rating it, right? I'm giving it three out of five stars. Okay. And finally, he might be recommending it. Okay. So, so you have two two other concepts that I don't have slides for, but that are important: social proof and the three R's: review, rate, and recommend. Okay. 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 I've I've heard the three R's before. I don't remember where, but I I have heard it before. Cool. Well, Cassie, that was a ton of material. I definitely soak in, I soaked in a lot. Um, I probably will take a look at the archives so I can refresh myself in the middle of the week. Good. I'm going to, I want to share. I just went through. Okay, so these are just some quick notes on presentation. Okay. Only a couple of slides, not all, not all the ones I'm showing there. The thing to recognize with regard to presentations, and I, I promise I'd, I'd start to talk more about this in week one um, as we, we got into the latter weeks. Presentation is critical in marketing because people expect marketers just to build great, great uh, presentations. So we're, okay. we're, I want to start you thinking about what that means. So these are just a couple of quick concepts. Your presentation should be, think of it in a story format, okay? What makes okay. a story exciting is you, you build in and then you identify what the conflict is and then you, the, the action rises and it meet, meets a climax and then everything resolves. Right. That's, we can do that with our presentations. We just need to be thinking about it that way. Okay. You want to make sure that your, your presentations, that your slides, they're designed to illustrate a concept. So when, you, when okay. you're putting design on a, a slide, don't be all scattered. Don't be all over the board. Don't, simple graphics that, that illustrate a concept is what's important. Okay. So, you know, here, this is a graphic of what? A, a box with some stuff in it, a, a match 
matches in a candle. And <laughs> this slide, if it were a real slide, give me a second. There we go. Sorry about that. Oh, it's um, okay. I ran out of my, my, uh, keep my mouth lubricated. <laughs> I usually have a bottle a long of water time. on the side. Anyway, if this were a real slide, what the slide would be talking about is a, a management dilemma called the candle problem. And okay. as you can see, the slide is very simple. It illustrates a, uh, a, a candle, and actually the, t the other two pieces are part of the candle problem itself. So everything comes together. The, the other point to remember about your slides is that you want to focus your slides to emphasize a point. So okay. even though I only have one, one line of text on here, it's not, a, it's not a huge line of text, but look at what I've done. But once the task called for even rudimentary cognitive skills, a large reward led to poor performance. And then what I did is I emphasized the point, rudimentary cognitive skills produce poor performance. Okay. I highlighted the words that I want you to focus on. Okay. Okay. So emphasize a point in your slides. And then this is just a mishmash of a, a number of, of things. The presenter is the presentation. So when you're presenting, your slides are just playing second fiddle. Okay. If they're, if they're bad, if they're designed bad, they'll distract from you. If they're good, so much the better. But, but your storytelling, the way that you walk people through the information is, is what it's all about. Okay. I, I once, I had a, a screen business, motorized screen business, back in, in um, 2006, 2007, 2008, we hit the, the crash in the economy. Mm -hmm. And um, before that became real evident, I, I knew we had some financial issues. And I, I started thinking about changing our business model. And we had been a distributorship for a, a larger company called Phantom Screens. And I decided that that we were not making enough margin because of all the things that we had to follow as, as being a member of the distributorship. Yeah. I thought, well, heck, we have the expertise that, that we can do this on our own, but I needed an investor. Okay. And so we, we found somebody that was interested in it. They were up in Jacksonville and we went up and originally my partner said they, uh, this was just an informal conversation and didn't want me to put together any sort of slides or anything. I said, okay. So, but then in the car ride, I started on a napkin and I started collecting my thoughts on, on four unique points I wanted to make. Okay. okay. So all I had were literally was a back of a napkin that I had scribbled notes on that I'm presenting, and, and by the way, I thought I was just going to be the, you know, the second fiddle that, that when my partner would, would say, John, do you have anything to add? And I'd go, yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> he was the senior partner, I was the junior partner. And let's see who's coming in here. Looks like Catherine. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Hi, Catherine. How are you? I can just barely hear you. Uh, what about now? Now I can hear you. Okay. I think it was trying to connect. I apologize. No, no, no worries. We are actually just about finishing up. We've only got a few more minutes. You're welcome to stay, and then the archive will be ready probably sometime tomorrow. Um, okay, did you, you started at 3? 
we started at three. Okay. All right. But but don't don't worry. Um, I'm just glad that, that you're you're here to see what the the platform looks like and, and what we're talking about. So yes, that's sir. all good. Okay, thank um, you. I'm actually I, I I've kind of moved off of uh, traditional topics right now, and I'm I'm talking about presentation skills, which are essential for all all marketers. Okay. Um, so, and I was talking about a, a meeting I was going to uh, with an investor for a, a new business, and my my partner, who was supposed to be making the, 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 the pitch and the presentation, he looks at me and he goes, I want you to do it. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I'm glad I got these notes on this back of this napkin that I've been scribbling on the ride from Orlando to Jacksonville. Um, mm -hmm. and, and sure enough, I got in and I took the lead and my, my partner didn't say two words. And I had the entire conversation based on the, the notes that I had made on the back of my, my napkin. And here's the interesting thing. We walked away with a, a, a backing letter of intent for $5 million for the first two years of the, the new business. Oh, wow. So when, when we say that the presenter is the presentation, I, I say that from firsthand experience. Slides are great, but if you don't know the material, it, they don't help. Um, now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, Dr. John. Um, duty calls with uh, mommy duties, so I'm gonna have to leave the uh, the, the meeting. No, no problem. I, I've got like three minutes left anyway, and uh, Catherine will hear that, and then we'll put it up on the archive. You'll be in great shape. Okay, no problem. Cassie, thank you, thank for you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me come in. You're quite welcome. Okay. Take have care. a good have a Thanks. good day, guys. You too, Thanks. Ken. So Catherine, the the I, I started this by saying how important presentations are. Um, right. they they are. The the slides are important. It's very important that as marketers we have good slides. I will tell you with that relationship with that investor, when mm -hmm. I came back to pitch the business so what he did is he then took our proposal and he wanted to get second and third tier funding. He didn't want to pay, pay all 5 million out of his pocket. Right. So that meant that I had to go back to subsequent meetings and, and present to a larger group of people. I, I knew the, the material, but then when I went back to present to those larger, larger group of people, mm -hmm. you can bet, that my slides were to die for. Um, they were they were killer slides. And really? there's, a, there's an expectation that if you're a marketer, that you know how to make great slide presentations, okay? Yes, so sir. two books that, that if they're not part of your library, they should be. One is Presentation Zen, and the other is, um, and that's by a guy by the name of Gar Reynolds, and then okay. another book is Slideology, and that's by a, a, a lady by the name of Nancy Duarte. So they're both excellent books. They have slightly different perspectives. I will tell you that in real life, Gar Reynolds and, and Nancy Duarte, not only are they competitors, but they're best friends. <laughs> okay. okay. So, um, so then on this slide that you're looking at on my, my – um, Make sure you are looking at it. Yes, okay. So the, um, just a couple other things to, to think about. Slides support or they illustrate concepts. And the typography, the type of type that you're using, it also supports the story. So everything has to come together and mm -hmm in order to, to work from a design standpoint. And then the other thing to realize is that as you're telling stories or as you're, you're making your presentation, you're always telling a change story. What's a change story? Well, a change story is here's where we started. Here's where we want to go. Here's how we're getting there. Right. Okay. And if you can build that format into your writing, into your presentation, mm -hmm. you will always do well. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been talking for like 
almost three hours. <laughs> okay. But I don't want to hold you. Is this recorded where I can go back and look at it? Yes. I, I will put, well, it, it'll, t it'll be back tomorrow okay. when I put it up. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, it'll be in the discussion thread. And if, the, if you go back to the original um, uh, FSO item for, for Zoom meetings, uh, mm -hmm. I posted I posted on that thread under where the, it says archive link. Okay. Okay. So you'll find it those two places. Um, we'll do this next week. And what I try to do is I try to take topics that don't fit the assignment after I've covered the assignment and discussion, but they're related to to marketing and and skill sets that that I think you need as a graduate, a master's graduate going out. And I, I add those back in as supplements to what we cover each week. Okay. So um, next week, we'll probably start to talk a little bit about content marketing from a new media standpoint. And we'll uh, dive into the, uh, the marketing funnel and yeah. also the buyer's journey and, and take a look at how that fits into what we do with regard to new media marketing. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Listen. Um my phone number is 407-267-8600. Okay. And if you need anything, you want to talk, text me, and then I'll call you. Or most times during the week, I'm, I'm here in, in the, the virtual room, the virtual video room, and um, – I'm usually here nine to 12 and two to four. And if by chance I'm away, send me a text and I'll come back and I'll, I'll open everything up. And, and we, if you want to meet face to face like this, which I like, I yeah. mean, I, 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 for a number of years, I taught in the classroom and I, I, I love teaching in the classroom. Uh, and if, if we can teach, if we can talk face to face through technology, that's, that's almost as good. Right. So, okay. Okay, well, thank you so much. It was so so nice to meet you. Same here. Hey, what, what part of the country are you in? I'm in Mobile, Alabama. You, I was talking to you in the car, wasn't I? Right, right. And I was running, trying to get in just then. And um, I had to, you know, go, go to the little girl's room first and then come on. No, no worries. Hey, yeah. can I ask what that is behind you? It is a silhouette. I actually, uh, I am in... Um, we have, well, I sell Mary Kay. And so uh, this is a silhouette of one of our decorations in our room. Uh, we like over here, right here is where we have like some of our products and stuff. And this oh, is actually cool. our meeting room. Oh, how neat. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually at the end of a journey that I've been in for three months. Uh, by the end of this month, I'll be a director for Mary Kay. Well, does that mean you get a pink Cadillac? Not yet. I will be in line to get a free car, though. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, the, the first one is a, a Chevrolet Malibu. I think it's the Malibu. Okay. Yes, but I'm, I'm excited about it. So I, um, I wanted to take this class uh, so that it could help me with my marketing skills for my products and, you know, presentations and everything. Very, very good. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, Again, if, if you need anything, don't hesitate to, to reach out. Oh. Um, what I told Cassie, actually, I didn't tell Cassie. I'll tell you all. I, maybe I did. I'm, I, I'm a little bit different than, than a lot of your professors from the standpoint that, that I'm a stakeholder. Okay. And by, by that, I mean, I, number one, um, I've been a student most of my life. Right, and in fact, I got I got bored a while back, and um, um, my boss, who's Doctor, well, I got a couple bosses, but my big boss is Doctor Dave Franco, and he goes, mm -hmm. John, take a degree at Full Sail, and I said, okay, I'll take a degree at Full Sail. So I'm a film student uh, while you're in school right now, so oh, wow. I'm also a Full Sail student. Wow. But beyond that. Um, so I'm a stakeholder because I'm a, an employee. I'm a stakeholder because I'm a, a student. But out of my five children, two of my five children are full sale graduates right now. 
Amazing. So I have, I have one that, that has an undergraduate degree in entertainment business. Mm -hmm. And uh, my daughter, Kristen, has a internet marketing master's degree, okay. which is this program it, okay. before the name change. Um, and I have another one that's in school right now. That's so um, I, with the, with the other two, they were living uh, at home when they, they did it. Actually, my daughter wasn't. Um, but my, my son was. And so I got to see his interactions with his professors. I got to see his, his struggle with the material and all. And um, like, for example, I'll tell you, you'll have a challenge probably Memorial Day. Why? Mm -hmm. Because schedules get always messed up around holidays. Okay. And we break the schema of, of your routine and getting back in the routine is always a challenge. Some people fly through, but if, if you're going to have a challenge, and, and it doesn't have to be a big challenge, it's just a small challenge. Right. But it always happens around the holiday times when we mess with the, 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 the due dates and the schedule. So I know that. I know that firsthand. So, um, uh, again, you'll have as much contact as you want with me, you're welcome to have. Okay. That's why I give you my personal cell phone number. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you, most of my colleagues shriek when they hear me do that. Um, really? Yeah, but I just call me. Yes, sir. <laughs> just <touch. laughs> Okay, thank you, you know, so much. The, the problem is if you send me something on FSO, mm -hmm. um, number one, I may, not be, I may not be looking at messages every day in FSO, right. uh, even though I try. But part of that's because of the way the system's designed from my end. I, I see everything that you do in FSO, I get some sort of message. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I have all those, by the way, sent to my email as well. But unless I open it up and read it diligently to see if you really want something from me, mm -hmm. I, I, sometimes I miss it. I try to catch them all, but I, I sometimes miss it. And, and part of that's because I probably get in the neighborhood of about 400 emails a day. Okay. Wow. I've, I've set up rules and I'll, I'll be very honest. I've got, I've got an archive folder. I'm mm -hmm. still trying to figure out the rule that I had set up years ago that's sending stuff to the archive folder because I'm beginning to notice a couple things that shouldn't be going to the archive folder. Um, right. But at any rate, when you send me a text or you send me, you know, call me and I get a voicemail, um, I, I get those quickly. Now, I may, may be doing something or maybe I miss it somehow on the phone. I love AT&T. I get a message a day later sometimes. But <laughs> if you don't hear from me in a short period of time mm -hmm. and you've tried to reach me that way, do it again. Okay. Will do. Um, uh, the greasy wheel gets the grease, right? Okay. Right. And um, in my life, I always try to be the greasy wheel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So um, that's all I got. Okay. Have a wonderful week. You too. And be safe. Yes, sir. You too. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Catherine. Take care. Bye now. You too, Dr. John. Bye-bye.